Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to HR Katha Presents, Happiness at Work, powered by happiness.me. We continue with our journey to find what triggers happiness at the workplace. Today, we'll be discussing the same with Chandrasekhar Mukherjee, Senior President HR and CHRO, Vilosa Industries. Chandrasekhar comes with over 28 years of professional experience and has worked across sectors, manufacturing, FMCG, media, finance, and also an NGO. I'm sure he will enlighten us with his bag full of experiences today. Chandrasekhar, welcome to the show. Thank you very much and thank you for having me over. Pleasure all mine. So how do you define happiness, you know, both professionally and personally? Do you think, you know, happiness or the, uh, the happiness quotient has changed what used to be when you started your career and what it is now? Um, so to answer your last question first, I think happiness, uh, the meaning of happiness has changed over the years and what uh, it was when you, you know you first joined the first job when I, you know, for example, when I worked for uh, Customs and Central Excise, vis a vis okay. now, so it, it, it has taken a, you know, it's, it's transformed from, you know, going to office, getting a job to now people in offices are not only looking at uh, a job, but they're looking at a job in which they can, you know, be happy about it. They can look at a career and also excel in the personal uh, space also. So for me, in, when I'm heading HR of an organization, for me, happiness for my for the employees working is when they have they when they're actually eager to come back to office on a Monday morning. When there are no Monday blues, uh, for me that is happiness. Uh, when and when people can not only you know grow within the organization professionally, but also there's a personal growth for the person and there's some learning, something else that they learn in addition to what they're learning. Um, so hence, wherever we, I have worked, we've all had a lot of fun activities, extracurricular activities, in addition to what we do. For, for example, we would have, uh, you know, photography classes, we'll have Zumba classes, we'll have guitar uh, uh, tuition classes, you know, for, for the employees, you know, after office hours or between breaks, whichever way that is. Okay. Uh, so, so hence, it is not only when a person is learning, uh, has an experience of learning about the organization or his own product or his work. But when he adds skills to it is important uh, because uh, my personal belief is a, a person when he's multifaceted can take more uh, pressure of work. Okay. When you're unidimensional, it becomes very you know difficult because you need some place to release uh, pressure. Um, so for me, for, for me, for releasing pressure is when on a Saturday, if I play squash and if I'm you know, angry, at, I've had something, you know, not, I've not been happy with my boss in office. I hit the ball hard and, you know, I feel good about it. So I, and I release pressure somewhere. So employees also need uh, you know, places where they out. So vent it out, have pressure. So, so you try to do a lot of things, you know, you, you try to create a room in which they can, you know, just go and play. A little bit of golf or you have a punching bag and you know you just go and punch there do stuff less so there's lots that you know you know we've tried in various organizations that we've worked for yeah so you you, you know you you started your career with uh, you said you custom, started your career with custom 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 custom. Right. Okay. Yeah. so how long did you uh, work with the government i worked with the government actually my first um, nine years has been with the government because i was a national and table tennis player um, okay. so hence the first job I got was custom central exercise and then I gave my exams, public sector exams and then got into, in my times, getting into public sector was a big thing. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, so, so you did that. So, but I was in coal India, so that was a great, great exposure working there. Um, so, like I said, though, during those days, getting a job or getting, you know, was something that made you happy. That, that itself was an, you know. Uh, yeah, is happiness. A reason for, for happiness, yes. That's, but that's not true today. You know, today people are looking at much more. Uh, not only they want interesting work, they want an interesting work environment, and how they can, you know, add to their work-related skills and non-work-related skills is, is something that everybody is looking at. 
do you think it's a great challenge to keep employees happy you know it's a day to day exercise you know you know I, if i talk about our personal lives we know we can't you know even within our family we can't keep everyone happy how do you manage you know or how how difficult is it to manage say an employee base so whatever whatever employee strength it would be it could be 1000 employees it could be 10000 employees it could be 1 lakh employees to keep everyone happy could be an humongous humongous task you know do you think that is achievable you know is there a scientific approach to it yeah yeah with a scientific approach it is achievable okay i'm just saying it it is absolutely achievable because a uh, hr first has to lead by example for people to have credibility about uh, you know about the function of hr so hr has to lead by example uh, number 2 it is very critical uh, that you know you have various initiatives that is there and various initiatives uh, and you have to there will be various target audience okay if you ask me all see the people who crept the most are the seniors in any organization okay so they are they are the, the big crib masters around okay uh, and the junior guys are you know in 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 indian environment they they are very easy to you know make them happy because you know, it's just interacting with them talking to them listening to them you know having fun with them sitting in, uh, on a lunch table with them itself they feel happy about it okay i'm just saying and obviously giving them initiatives activities things of that sort as you go up the corporate ladder it becomes more and more difficult to get people to you know do initiative so as an hr the biggest challenge is you know motivating your leadership team to support on hr initiatives that's the biggest challenge okay and um, and various organizations have you know uh, various methods of the madness and it all again depends on support from your ceo who is there okay um, so and it's true which i have seen when i was a uh, when i was a kid and i used to play for an example so when i played um, when i was a national rank player and i used to you know play tournaments okay uh, when the collector was sports loving it used to be funny to see that when i played my match you know the entire you will see the 20 30 cars with those you know red lights on them who were watching coming to watch my match as soon as he got transferred you know i was like an orphan and nobody came to watch my match right so the same today in a in an environment in a corporate environment as a ceo when he is uh, when he supports initiatives like that okay when he when he believes in in people people processes people practices engaging people life becomes easier but nevertheless uh, nevertheless it's the role of hr to you know keep doing that okay and also i would say that you need to have very strong processes hr processes to have that engagement initiative to be successful so it's it's more like walk the talk so if i don't have a proper appraisal process okay and i don't do it properly and then i do all this it doesn't make any you know you know it does it doesn't ring up you know uh, a bell in their head to say okay fine this is what you do or don't do so hence it's very important to have very good mature processes that you have people processes that support the individuals learning growth everything and the organization goals and then you have the engagement activity is important so so that that's that's about. so when a person is looking to uh, join an organization so what does he look at he looks at uh, the organization he looks at the role he looks at the boss is going to support and he also good looked at as at the environment in the office space right so if i'm not done the first three the doing the fourth one make so it's it's what a it, it's an holistic approach that makes you makes people uh, happy in office um, so and also um also you know giving your shoulder to the employees to them to come and say things okay even if you have an environment you know you will have one odd bad day okay the manager also may have one odd bad day okay he yeah. may be a great manager but suddenly so so hence it's just like a pressure cooker you need to give that valve for people to come in and uh, and speak so so various initiatives like i said previously whether have you having a engagement activities or having town halls where you speak to them engage with them they come and speak to you uh, uh, and tell you things or I mean, when they can after an appraisal process if they can come and talk to you and tell you what the issue is how it is uh, despite having the processes in place and things of that sort so you think uh, so is very important yeah it's very important yeah and a simple thing uh, let me share when i was when i used to work for colgate okay so we, when we uh, so i was you know we were we had 
we used to call this distress posting, difficult posting. So we were the first company which went in to Nepal, which is a wholly owned subsidiary. Previously, Nepal had organization, they were all, you know, uh, joint ventures. So we were wholly owned subsidiary. So we were 12 of us who went, okay. But we had processes in which, okay, anybody who came from New York or from Bombay would come a day earlier or leave a day later. So they would have one meal with all we, uh, you know, expats and our families. Okay. okay, the seniors will come, sit, talk, have, you know, a couple of glass of beer, you know, and, you know, and speak generally, find out what the issues are. Uh, so during the COVID also, you know, we, you know, I try to do that. We try to do that. So we had, you know, Zoom calls with employees and their families, check with them how they are doing, what they're doing. Uh, so because uh, when people, you know, uh, do not leave an organization which takes care of you during the bad times. Yeah. Okay. How do you react and how an organization reacts when or a COVID or a flood or, you know, there's been some natural calamity or whichever way it is. How do you react at that point of time to an employee that's critical? Even in a personal illness, okay, if somebody's had a cancer, you know, or a family a member had some problems. So how do you do that? That is, that all adds up to the, you know, happiness quotient of, of, of people there. Because after a point, it's like this, people get, uh, sorry, people get used to, uh, uh, for example, if you get a uh, coffee winding machine with all the fancy stuff there, okay, the first one month, everybody's going and, you know, using it. it, after that, it veins out, okay. Yeah. Uh, so after that, you will normally come and see, they'll tell you, no, no, the canteen tea was better or canteen coffee was better. But the question is, you know, how do you deal with those things and, you know, do that as in part. So if you, you you know, give them the most fancy, uh, you know, uh, programs of, you know, give them fancy club membership. Unless you have the personal touch, that's the most important thing. And if I may explain to it the way I, I, I feel is, you know, if I treat my own employees like my family member, it works well. For an example, so my, both my kids are abroad, right? They, you know, they were either working there or, or studying there. So when my daughter, uh, you know, sends me an SMS, I feel happy, right? But when my daughter, you know, I hear her voice, I feel happier. When I see her on the video call, I'm even I'm much more happy, yeah. much happier. But I'm the happiest when I hug her at the airport. When she's there in, in front of me, okay? In person, yeah. In person. So the same thing with an employee. So whatever we may say about, uh, obviously, I, I'm a, uh, and a, uh, big fan of, of technology but technology cannot replace the personal touch so we in HR have to remember that 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 cannot that will not uh, you know move on. so so the question is uh, that's the critical piece in that and what I've learned uh, from the you know especially working with a couple of great organizations like Colgate or Times Bent Coleman or uh, NSCs is uh, when the employee has a problem or trouble or whichever thing if you're there beside him or her, if HR is there, half the work is done, okay? Uh, it's simple stuff, okay? If somebody's sick at home or some death at home, if you're there and asking, okay, what do you want? You want a car? You want an ambulance? What do you want? Let, let's, you know, take... And it doesn't cost money, okay? Uh, you, know, and if, you know, if there is a problem, nip it in the bar. That's... And, and, no, and they feel wanted and they feel your care. They're there, okay? So, I'll tell you why. Because when an employee... Um, you know, takes a decision of switching jobs, right? Family plays a role. So if you're shifting a job, switching a job because of money, the family say, no, your boss is great, your company is great, you remember, right. you know, they yeah. took care of you then. And so you you have that, you know, you know, uh, and that is no replacement to me, we in HR giving spiels of why he should, he or she should stay back or the boss saying that. So it is... The practicality yeah. is very different, you know. The yeah, it is. That is very, very important for how the people, you know, it just, and as a chart professional, you feel very happy about it. Uh, you know, I'm just saying as, you know, um, so recently well, in April, I had a very bad COVID attack. Extreme. I was in the ICU, okay. But the way all the places that I worked, starting from, you know, unionized workforce to the people, to seniors, the way, you know, they all rallied around, helped my wife, did stuff which was there, you know. It's unbelievable, and and that you get only when you 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 stood beside people. Yeah. Uh, so so that's the important part, and again, and the culture of the organization also plays a huge part 
uh, to that okay um and and it, and, and it's it's critical okay because just by just work or just looking at whether person has achieved this kra kpis okay and and finally i like to say is uh, how an organization can differentiate between performance and a need to support a person what organization mix up is that if a person is high performer you are willing to help him out any which way you do okay yeah. and a person not a poor performer you don't do it but actually uh, that has a negative impact because high performer also sees how you you deal with people so so during uh, any um, you know any trouble any issue any calamity yeah. you have to be uniform across it's not a high performer or poor performer everybody is a human being and you need to take care okay um so that's important you you just talked about and then uh, i really like uh, what you said because everyone you know when i start discussing happiness with people they start talking about the newer generation you know but you said the biggest grip masters are people who are at the senior level why do why do you say so you know it's uh, and and why do you think that happens you know obviously in your experience Uh, you know you're talking from your experience why do you think is it a phenomenon very uh, india specific or it happens yeah, this is, or, this or, is across or, or, across globally yeah. because i work for multinational i work for indian i work for indian professional run organization i work for family run businesses see the uh, the reason for that is uh, people as they go up the corporate ladder they suddenly start forgetting about um, you know the uh, the started. people the, where they start in the people aspect of it Yeah. they are so focused on you know whereas that should not be actually um, if you um, i'll just go a little theory if you look at the you know when anybody uh, uh, when you do a balance score card okay uh, when and when in a balance score card the focus of the senior people should not be on business and 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 process it's on customer and people yeah okay but the focus is reverse he's looking at business and he's looking at process which is not the thing it's it's the process and business is the is other it has to happen with uh, normally and his job is to look at ensuring that customers are satisfied and he keeps meeting customers and he keeps meeting employees and taking care of employees so that's one and second thing big and what happens is and as you go up the corporate ladder you start feeling that you know there's nobody that is is taking care of me i'm taking care of everybody it's just like you know uh, what happens is you know I, I, at home when when we become the senior person we think you know i'm i'm taking care of everybody there's nobody taking care of me okay and obviously you know as you go up the corporate ladder a little bit of ego things of that sort come in and all that stuff that is there so it is a you know um, you know it's a uh, combination of everything that everything put together i've seen and they, and for a success for an hr person to be successful and initiators to be successful they have to be on board Okay, and they will be on board only when I can, as an HR professional, prove to them that you know their productivity, you know, will go, the productivity of the employees will go up. So hence, their business will go up, my retention will go up. The best employees, you know, you can retain all that. Technically, the line manager is the is the the HR manager. Technically, you know, if you look at it, we are supporting. Okay, and uh, and if you look at it, I may be there, and somebody's, for example, somebody's. family there's been death i may be there as a hr i'm representing the company basically i'm representing company and the ceo but if the line manager is not there you know the employee is you know i may be the cushion but the line manager being there because he's working for his boss working for the yes because and the, the same way interaction with the line manager is is yeah. is much more more frequent yes. there Yes, today's generation. If you ask me, I'll be very honest. Looking at my kids, they are much easier to handle. Actually, they are much cool. They know what they want. The only thing they want a lot of communication. They don't want you to, you know, boss around. They want them. They are happy if you tell them on their face what it is. Uh, they don't like double standards. It's the other way around. They don't like politics in office. They are basically, you know, ones who want to work, have fun, enjoy life, um, and and. and they're very happy actually if you you know i'm just saying is um organizations which you know people from outside would think are very straight jacketed over there also i've seen where i've dealt with most of the people who are either cas ids icws and things of that sort you know when you are with their youngster on the dance floor till the time he or she is there they're very happy about it okay or you play a cricket match with them or you know go for a picnic with them things of that sort so they you know and they want to be treated like equals okay Today's generation doesn't want to be 
spoken down okay they just wanted to be the same so you know it's just and what i've seen is uh people are not understanding those changes what are happening yeah okay, the changes which are it's the same thing you know we don't realize that what our parents have the way the pair our parents have yeah, what exactly. is our, i have i can't do it with my you know with my kids or my son or daughter and things of that sort and i'm saying they they they're totally different okay in india it's a cultural issue because on a saturday sunday you still keep phoning but in the west yeah you know, those things don't it's happen and yeah. but the kids want it that way because they look at the counterparts they look at the friends which are there they look at things which are there so uh, so things are you know and um, the world has become a global citizen now except couple of pockets which is happening in the world which you know not there but as a world everybody wants it that way so and 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 whatever happens i think it's much more universal and not very uh, yeah absolutely you know absolutely. Li- limited to a particular geography uh, no. not anymore not anymore because people are all aware with, with the, so hence how you keep communicating with people it's important the same way i again i go back home and how i keep communicating with my kids that when they are in trouble they can still phone me okay not think baba is going to you know rip me apart even in office it's important when you made a mistake you should you know make that environment for me workplace happiness where the employ the my subordinate can come and tell me boss the i've done this one of mistakes actually i know for that sir and i learned it from my bosses who used to keep saying chandra fine you've done a mistake but the rule of the game is you can't repeat the mistake so find a new mistake next time so as soon, as long as you keep doing new mistakes i'm fine with you i'm cool so i'm just saying you can have you know and and that's uh, it's, it's simple things you know i'm just saying in in, in in making happiness work and some people come late to office okay so i would innovate and say okay fine now this is the time all of us have to come if anybody want is late something genuine fine with me but not genuine if you're coming late 10 rupees 20 rupees 100 rupees on the, on the table sort of stuff okay and then we party after that so you know so you make it fun and games and you still becomes you know make it strict and things that sort it works that way so because as it is you have tools to uh, differentiate people today because of the appraisal process and the variable pay uh, and the variable pay when you have the, what you've achieved and how you've achieved okay yeah so even if you've been a great performer but the how has not been great you can still you know uh, downgrade the person so you have tools so so why not make it more fun why not make it more lively for things if so small nuances be yeah, human small. that yeah. that is what matters that is the most important thing it's it's i'm just saying automatically everything will come um, and the other thing with my experience what 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 i've learned is if there would be people whether it's in family whether it's in office who would have stabbed you behind your back okay but i sh- we should never take that one off or two off example and then you know change our pattern of doing things because 90% of people are are, are good it's it's mix of people always you know there are good people there are bad people right yeah, absolutely everywhere it's in the society it could be there in the company it could be there in a family everywhere yeah. everywhere so you don't you know you don't if one cousin brother has not been great to you that doesn't mean all the cousins are bad you know, so, it's, it's not that so so it, it's all how you work on philosophy so one of my you know another philosophy that i had is in life is whatever i have felt hurt about in life okay starting from my teachers in school to my boarding in lamartne or or in uh, lovedale or to my parents or to my bosses i do the opposite of that and you will success so if you have been hurt means you genuinely hurt you feel that's not the right thing to do so do the opposite of that you work you know you you're cool about it right uh, so so i'm just saying is my father was a disciplinarian so he would first whack you and then ask you a question what what did you do wrong okay so i do the opposite so you ask your children half the time you don't have to do that so so do whatever is you know opposite of uh, you know very felt hurt genuinely hurt i'm not saying just you have to do opposite for the sake of opposite yeah uh, and so and as human beings we know what is genuinely not right heart and heart we all know what is right or wrong okay line managers you know they often complain that uh, you know hr keeps on telling us you know how we should behave with our employees they don't mm-hmm. tell the employees this is how you know you should behave with their uh manager you know that teaching is uh, missing so i i've seen often you know line managers keep uh, complaining about it you know and probably 
that triggers that creates some kind of unhappiness uh, do you think so or- no so so the question is again it's my, as an hr i am the bridge between the employee and the employer okay yeah. and in this case is the bridge between the employee and the line manager Land. So, yeah. so uh, it's the same thing again. I'll go back at home. I like if if my if my mom and my wife have an issue, I have to be the bridge and I have to be you know fair to both of them, right? In office, I have to be fair to my employees and fair to my line manager. Who's right is right or wrong is wrong. As simple as that. There's no no questions about it. Uh, th- and the way you communicate, how you make it, uh, th- and the most important, you know, there are methods of uh, dealing with uh, um, you know conflict. Okay, uh, so the, some of the HR people stay away from conflict. I believe in you know, you know, meeting the conflict head on. And when I say head on, not roughly, but get both of them sit in a room. Let's talk. Let's discuss. Let's you know, you know, it's more of a coaching feedback, you know, environment that you create where you can speak. And then again, they have to have trust in the HR. So whatever they have spoken inside doesn't go outside. Neither to the the other line manager of a different function. or it goes out within the team members of his so it is a, you know that's the most important part trust faith getting that you know this happens when you know people do not have trust in hr or people think that hr is working for the ceo so he is going to go and you know uh, sneak to the ceo saying his, his people have had this problem and things of like that sort so if i go as you know a person who's doing that because in today's day and age i don't have to sneak because when i do the uh, in the employee engagement survey okay you have got a manager scorecard so the ceo anyway will know the manager scorecard so if i can tell him okay fine i'm i will work with you to ensure your scorecard is better so i am you know part of his team okay i'm not a uh, thing so so it's how do you make it uh, happen is the most important thing and the most crucial element in hr being successful is the trust factor and you as hr leading by example simple and once that happens you know integrated into the system many of time yeah. what happens is hr keeps itself separate you know they are like a separate body they are like a judiciary they are like a you know a, a body which is there watching everything and and would take calls you have to so then i will that's what i'm saying is the reason why is that hr should understand business also hr should understand where the shoe is pinching of the line manager right so uh, so when for example uh, even f- uh, you know when you are doing a negotiating with the union okay you should understand what is the loading factor and what is the you know time and motion study to get the get the right uh, you know uh, deal from the union and get the right uh, you know deal from the line managers both because you have to understand it very well Now the both are you know, and you are the main fulcrum of negotiate negotiating. And if you don't understand it, both will make you know make you a big fool. So you have to understand business. Okay, you have to understand say simple example today. Uh, I am in Bilosa, okay, because I work in a, in an FMCG. I worked with uh, Bennett Coleman times FMCG and media. These are sales driven organizations, big time sales driven organizations. Okay, and to and, and today Bilosa employees are also very different. You know, yeah, but. The sales guys over here will say, "Rat ki and rat ki no budget. We got call karna, dasbe call karna." So I said, "Listen, you are we are in textile manufacturing. Okay, even if you are selling, okay, if you are selling to a corporate uh, which is larger corporate, he is not going to take your call after seven o'clock because he himself has gone home. If you are selling to a retailer, I said, I know retail business. Retail me to koi nobody is going to entertain you. The time window that you have got is eleven to four o'clock. Okay, that's or three o'clock. That too on a weekday." Because after that he's going to entertain customers and he's not going to take your call. So why are you pressurizing your employees to say this? You know, it's it doesn't make you know it doesn't make sense because you at end of the day it's cust- so you have to understand the business. You understand what it is, how the business works, how it works. You have to also understand the culture changes also. For example, when you when I moved from uh, you know from FMCG. Hardcore blue blood multinational to a media again a blue blood media, but culturally it's totally different. You know, it it could especially from a Colgate environment it could be a very in you know, a big cultural shock the way they speak, what they say, yeah. how they they do things, and you know the examples they give. So you have to then understand what it is. Okay, uh, so I keep saying when anybody used to join me in 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 when I worked for Bennett, I said, see, uh, 
there are two orientation task orientation relationship orientation okay but in a media environment get your relationship orientation right but if you look at in bennett we had n number of people from fmcg after mr richard saldana came in and ravi dhariwal and guys like us come so when you come from multinational you want to deliver results the next day this it becomes That's, much more process it, actually yeah, because you're wired that way right but media is not wired that way media is you know you have to talk to them speak to them understand them they have faith in you they understand you then they start okay otherwise you know you go and tell them this is done through relationship there you know That's, un- yeah. un- un- unlike unlike you know other fmcg yeah. sector yeah. where is driven by numbers mm-hmm. or policy or strategy and also or- relations it's also relationship it's just also like relationship. all social issues but your relationship it's is come and then business falls in relationship place. comes first and then comes that's right so hence you know you need to you know so as hr also you have to understand what it how 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 they interact what they work out, what it comes what are you expect so different industries will have uh, and that's how if you ask me honestly you know i have been a better father i have been a better manager because of you when you work in different places you got different uh, nuances that work no i'm just saying uh, and uh, things are very different so for example uh, the work culture for ex- uh, in the government offices okay uh, there's lots that you can learn and implement in private organization also you know the software aspects of the how they deal with people what it is how they do stuff which is there you know which you do in a corporate you know you know a very competitive corporate also in it works i'm just saying it so so it's just uh, not that so And, and i think government organizations i have seen you know uh, colleagues work like very uh, very much like family there yeah yeah absolutely it's 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 it's, it's you know it's it becomes one small group they stand by each other and it be, they become like a small you know a cohesive force together absolutely. and you know the, what you, that's what i'm saying but the same thing you if you replicate for example when we were in nepal and it's a different difficult place to be in okay with the families okay you had to bring that culture in okay so so organizations have processes in place for example um, a, when um, the c uh, the the ceo of the uh, of the company and the hr manager of the company their wives also were seen before selecting the people Oh, that's interesting. The reason for that is simple. Like what happens in the armed forces when the uh, general is out in war or general out for whatever period, yeah. it's the ladies who take care of the ladies, no? Yes. Yeah. And it's like the one big family, you know. Everybody it's has got their. And the same thing in office, actually. If you look at today, the amount the organizations and the you know your fellow employee has helped you during COVID is is. is something that has helped people sail through that's so, that's how the system worked during uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, it works that way it, that's how it works i'm just saying is if you have a great admin manager in in any, any office um, happiness quotient goes up when n number of times i'm just saying is simple thing so when an employee falls sick okay you may have the best insurance policy but the way you support the employee uh, from getting admitted to a hospital and he goes for a, and all of us mind you have uh, you know uh, cashless policies yeah. in place but all of us know how difficult it is you know yeah. so hence the admin guy in cop in, in any cop company who you know has the license does them does them properly can phone the hospital and say no this is coming don't worry get him get him without anything you know those are very small no, things it doesn't it doesn't cost anything and that's the impression that um, but it has got the effect is much more you are saying man much more. that is all this is all about happiness in office it is all the bottom it is it is you know i'm just saying is do you think people at the grassroots level or you know you are working with manufacturing you continue to work with manufacturing people at the grassroots level for them happiness question has changed the nuances of happiness has changed It's no the man manufacturing is almost is the same has not changed over the years it's it's the same uh, where you know the way you deal with the workman how you talk to him what you say uh, again and their uh, credibility of the hr plays a huge role okay and especially in a unionized environment yeah okay 
simple thing is having discipline in the cafeteria and people you know when you want to the best example is if you can look at any hr guy who can change the cafeteria contractor okay you know you can do it only if you have credibility there and over there is, is people know even more about you than anywhere else in a corporate because uh, and especially bombay you in know environment of bombay delhi you know your co employees or people do not know as much about you but in a factory environment they know to the limit what is cooked in your kitchen i'm just trying to explain yeah. so they know that much about you so hence you have to be that much more uh, sensitive to uh, their needs uh, their their needs dealing with uh, as you know uh, leading by example doing the right things talking the right way and there uh, you also you know and small gestures mean a lot to them there okay visiting them to in a hospital when somebody's gone down if they have some cop who's come there who's troubling them and if you can just you know help them out from small stuff yeah. you also have to over there it becomes even more personal because they may have a fight with somebody within the village or their brother and they they want you to advise resolve and by them yeah and, and you know you know so that's it's a it's a actual friend philosopher guide sort of a relationship there um, but the aspirations know. have changed na no? i think uh, aspirations have changed but the the philosophy is the same na no? they've not changed if today even today if you go back you know, well, I, you know i did part of my education in lahabad so got answers to play so if i go back there somebody say acha gaadi le jao somebody say chabi le lo acha ghar mein jao don't stay in hotel how can you stay in hotel you know from you have to hop from one house to the other house the other house okay but today if when i live in bombay and you know, it, you know how if i have to recollect you know when the society that i have lived how many people uh, would if my wife goes on a holiday somewhere how many will tell me acha ghar mein aake khana khao it won't be as many i'm saying but those places um you know have that uh, what should i say um that warmth that, that you know that you know feeling of one big family that you're in so that's and, and it's more if you don't do it is you're looked out down upon so do you think your your small town upbringing you know alabad was not such a small town but huh. but you know uh, compared to the metros it's still considered to be small your upbringing has Help you shape up like that, you know, thinking to be more human, more, uh, you know. I think that's more very with my very honestly, my sports, my family, my father and my parents have, you know, that's what is mine. Uh, you know, I have and what the reason that I've lived in different places because of my father. So you know, I've lived in down south and then north and east west. So I've tend to understand people. Okay, so so the question is, uh, various places have. various nuances for somebody pongal is important from somebody baisakhi is important for somebody else onam is important uh, so and i've seen my you know i've seen my dad for example i will never forget this example i was in in every saturday i had to go to with him to the factory okay so once i saw an example there was one workman who came uh, and he had to uh, for two months he defaulted giving you know my father said okay don't cut his salary whatever uh, because he had to give back some loan But third month, my father said, "Cutega." There's no way this is not going to cut. And he told my father said, "Okay, I know you have a problem. So whatever you have to pay back, you give that. The low amount that you have to pay back, hundred, two hundred, whatever was that, I will give you the money. You come and give me back afterwards." So the question is, he's followed the rule. He's ensured that has happened, but he's been human. So I've seen my Baba doing that. I've seen him, you know, how he's handled, um, you know, when he was heading Britannia in Chennai, and I saw that went to the. So you know, you know, I give that. um but different towns have got different uh, aspects which have helped me my my um exposure in laba has helped me to become a great ir person okay because i i understand what a leader thinks okay what he thinks how he thinks how he cannot think okay that has helped me that exposure of what it is is made me you know realize stuff which is there uh so so various places so you're not scared okay if um and people may think you know i wouldn't uh, you know people think that uh, you don't have to face the things in corporates which are don't have union okay so i worked in places which i had not you no unions as an hr profession you forget that you need to you you uh, do not have to deal with it's not a question of union or not union you deal with difficult employees everywhere that you go so okay, how you deal with it is important 
just for example again another organization um, you know i was there and 2008 there was a bubble burst and you know i had to uh, and i had to let go of people okay thousand people but you know for me i don't uh, you know i am not happy about letting go of thousand thousand people but what made me happy when i joined another organization and it was the annual day function there so one of the senior ladies had asked his husband her husband to leave and he go, comes back and tells his wife this guy's although this guy has had sacked me but is a great guy this how do you do that is important because everybody realizes that you are doing it you uh, you know you are not the guy you are doing it. so so how, it's those are stuff that is there and you know and you have to deal with things so um and especially when you do such things okay it's important how you do it because this spoils the happiness of the rest of the organization and what happens in organizations is the negative stories are spoken more than the positive stories than the positive stories so how you can make positive stories to come out is the most important there's so many any organization that you go you'll see so many positive stories so many positive stories okay the so people make so, noise when something goes wrong people don't talk about it when everything is in place but there are a lot of efforts so, that needs to put that thing in place so that's the role of hr that's the role of the especially the leadership team to speak about the the stories that have gone so then because you know people have to get reassured every business cycle will come in a cycle where you let go of people okay so how do you deal that that process is the most critical aspect of it it's the the most important um, and that stories will keep lingering will story will keep lingering out in the market also so uh, and if, and i have not seen any organization not doing it you you have you have worked with mncs and you have worked yeah. with uh, you know indian i have worked with mncs uh, family run businesses family run professional businesses. professional organization like you know board run organizations like uh, nsc so yeah I've... so do you think the happiness uh, aspect is different across companies there, there is some they, yeah, they yeah. show that you know they they That's seem because they are so very strong solid. yeah they are both because their process are very strong yeah and uh, the so so question is the halo effect is the least in the multinationals and when i say multinational i will say fmcg and pharma multinationals okay not the banking multinationals you can go and see the happiness questions of bank, bank, financial sector multinationals is the same across because they are very very focused on you know the kps krs bonuses that's what they're looking at so they can uh, you know they are cut throat uh, the but the face is all over in banks ah, so yeah. banks is everybody is running everybody is doing stuff so so that's the uh, but yeah so but multinationals because they're very strong in processes they've got very strong people processes so even if a ceo comes he cannot change the character of the organization because there is a feedback mechanism huh? i know multi he cannot but in 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 family run indian business or indian business, you actually the ceo can make a huge difference the shareholders of bennett coleman are actually very gracious uh, but i know people say something else because i was in addition to what i was i was a bombay branch head so i know uh, and i have worked very closely uh so the questions they're very gracious the way they do things deal with stuff which is there i'm just saying is uh, we've had policies when we've done a barter deal with mahindra and he's you know asked that barter after that barter every employee could go and stay in the mahindra so he did a barter deal with uh, the cars cars were given at 60% so there's lots that is um, it's done and so again if you learn to adjust okay i've seen people who come in there you know over there you had to stay with the um, if you are a senior you would stay either with the two brothers and the mother okay when she was alive was there in their houses in the big huge houses yeah. but if you look at it, it's pretty sweet okay they take care of what you are taking what you are eating what you are doing you know and they do it in a manner which is there. so uh, there are some professional in what's all this i like rather stay in a five star hotel you know my uh, so you know it's all uh, I know. There, there, there are good and bad aspects of. Yeah, that. aspects so. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So might like it, and some people. Uh, yeah, some people. Yeah, but in the long run, it's 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 once you work for certain organizations, difficult uh, because of and it's more to do with.
the way the culture and environment is and a lot plays with people like pradeep goas of the world who were there in bennett so that also has a huge uh, because whatever people have written about him is actually true I, I, yeah uh, so the question is i have heard people i have seen people i have seen him so you know i'm just saying so so yeah he and, was he he ran, ran it like a you know a professional and uh, yeah and he took he had that the, uh, the emotional quotient with him also he worked on performance looked at informational quotient uh, he uh, he uh, at that era also knew how to deal with youngsters the simple stuff there people who come and told me stories you know you know second floor corner room there somebody was working he was getting out of the room you know what are you doing here at 9 in the night uh, okay. come on come on, let's go and have beer so when you take a youngster fresh out two years work ex or management trainee and you tell him tell we you know so these us these are you know this is something which is like you will hear stories about rusi modi if you go to you know go to an excel and go to disco uh, despite being a hard class master the way he strict treated people way he's done stuff which is there so and and i don't know why people don't you know do not realize that to be a great manager uh, your people skills play a huge role okay you don't have to be to be a successful manager uh, you don't have to be a brilliant uh, you know line professional okay uh, but to be a successful manager to be a brilliant you know people manager and human being and even if you are you know 50% at your thing you will get your work done but at the end of the day your job is to get work done you, have to, about, you know a culture which has which has got a flatter uh, structure like you said you gave the example of sports you know where you know it is a great leveler somebody who is a captain also has to work you know after being a captain has to work as a regular uh, you know team member so if absolutely. organizations follow the same rule do you think it will be a happier lot or absolutely much happier lot you just have to first you have to when you come to an organization you have to think this is no different than what how i treat my my family members okay i have to be if my son is not well i say okay fine don't go to school the same thing i have to do with my my team member and the same way what i've done in sports what i've done there there will be even as an hr professional okay even with so many years of work ex there will be places where somebody else will be better than me because he or she has worked in that field where for example if i hire a person from tmdc okay who has been a development person out and out okay he or she will have you know that much more knowledge than me or I have newer things which are there so might as well listen to that and as a leader it's very important that you listen to people you listen to especially the juniors juniors have very bright ideas they'll tell you things which you can do they'll give you feedback uh, and, and you know you get to do that and i've seen simple things making a difference so when i as when i'm in the, when i lead a child when when we have lunch breaks everywhere that i've worked i've told my team you are not sitting in a group hr cannot sit um, uh, you have to sit in different tables okay and be with different teams so we as hr cannot sit as a team so our job is to sit with people understand and on a lunch table you they tell you so much more freely they are less stressed out they they're talking more things you will come to know you can help them out you can come and then also pro- policies okay although you know uh, business excellence tells you you need to take feedback okay and there's a process of taking feedback a formal feedback but the informal feedbacks are much more it's not uh, much uh, more important than on drafting policies understanding why attrition is happening understanding what 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 is the problem in certain departments or why there is not a problem uh, so it helps you so you don't need a pulse survey you actually no. do these things you know you, do, you know exactly to understand the pulse okay. so these are these are the, what you call in business excellence lead indicators no these are not lag the others are lag indicators you're going to get it you know that's going to happen no? it's a lag indicator so for a lag indicator for example in nsc we had a women mentoring program so women nsc had 33% women employees for example so you would see that women are leaving the organization after you know after giving birth to a child okay and that's because they they've not done stuff so then we spoke and we had senior ladies who've done well you know before they start going to women a simple thing uh, that if you can coach them so what happens when a fa- la- uh, when a girl goes on a lady goes on a maternity leave normally she looks for a nanny and 
and i genuinely feel hr has a huge role to play people process and practice have a, a big role to play in organization being successful but sadly that's not the focus areas and, and you know and a lot of jargons have come into hr and that's where um, i feel uh, you know we have to be rooted and do stuff which is there and because and there's no difference because and i'm just saying is um, my mother was an italian or roman catholic you know i have family back there and family other places when i see what what they, the way they deal with uh, uh, you know people there what deal we are or what people deal with you is almost the same other than the language being different the way they will communicate is different okay um, you know a uh, yank will tell you directly okay do this uh, a british will tell you if i was in your place i would have done this means you better do it or hr you know or, uh, or an indian boss said main bol raha hu aisa karo karke but the, the words chosen or language is different but you know everybody is there so is how do you deal is is the most important and i'm just saying is uh, and there is uh, and if somebody tells me there's no caste system and all this stuff there's thing everywhere no without naming organization i say even working for a multinational you know uh, uh, after 6 so months there, you is there uh, it's happened with me you know I've, I've, it so happened you know i was uh, the regional head was there you know, regional manufacturing head was there and uh, that's i just finished 6 months in that organization and we just obviously over a beer chatting and suddenly you know it so happened that his mother was an italian and my mom was italian so end of the day he told me son i'll keep you engaged so even if a boss wanted to not to send me for programs he ensured you know i was so so that's there everywhere it's 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 uh, um it, it's not that and somebody says up has got caste system in maharashtra done them i don't believe that and but only thing you have to understand the nuances huge difference in nuances for example north of india especially up bihar uh, it's so different okay the upper caste goes to a lower caste and you know wo is a बख्शते हैं वहां जाके खाना खाते हैं बट महाराष्ट्र में इस साइड में नहीं करते गुड पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड लीव द नॉट सो गुड स्टफ एवरीबडी इज गॉट ऑल कास्ट कलर क्रीड रिलीजन रीजन एवरीवेर इज गॉट दैट ओके सो सो इट्स इट्स देर सो but yeah things what i've seen also places have changed also the places some places have become better some places have not been so good so uh, and sadly the place that i'm you know i'm proud to belong to um culture of that place especially the 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 corporate culture of that place is not that great it's is bengal it had the you know had the best culture around okay uh, but now because of whatever the reasons are so you feel bad about it so that's something that i know uh, we all feel bad too uh, it is that that thing need that needs to change uh, humongously it is uh, it is because the talent is there and i'm just saying so the talent is is um, is there yeah, it be, uh, yeah. spread it so, all across man yeah, it is in the same way in kerala talent is all all across i was there in south man humongous people are so talented but somehow despite these two people being these two places being the most educated places uh, but they are so top down sort of a approach unbelievable I, you know you you f- how can that happen in an environment where, where you know i'm just saying that uh, uh, people are so so it's so there's no correlation to um, you know place being very um, uh, forward looking up, uh, whatever but still you have a different sort of a, you know i'm saying is um, uh, um, so these places to these were a great examples of where their people are so forward looking forward minded and you know, many aspects but when it comes to employee the dealing with employee is totally different it's like you know i'm saying it you, you do it types you know very much of less of uh, which is um, so that's what i think uh, and the other thing is you know if we can keep hiring people who have the who are multifaceted who are not unidimensional uh, that's the critical piece in getting the culture of the organization 
culture of job and also getting the culture hiring also plays a huge role when i say hiring uh, you never take um, uh, if for example you have to hire 10 people okay 10 management trainees never hire from the same college all the 10 people spread it across college don't hire from the same region same state same thing. so those things are you know heterogeneous workforce has a better work culture always and uh, homogeneous workforce has the the culture is always will be what toxic or uh... not toxic it becomes very you know it becomes very complicated complicated so, because what happens and, and because homogeneous when it's a homogeneous culture you know people know everything about you you know in, in a corporate world you know, some amount of formality has to be there na and heterogeneous culture is more open more so that, so these things are very critical and finally people have stopped looking at you know questioning people from from which schools they have passed out from because if you look at it i'll go th- te- uh, technical so when you are looking at any hiring you so also well read and well bred is one part of it this other is you look at what is his uh, you know knowledge skill and attitude right so the knowledge comes from the college you passed out engineering mba whatever skill is from the companies that you passed for done yeah the organization that you work for and attitude is a family and the school not the college so we are missing this this aspect of it and okay so actually if you look at the cv you will come to know banda kaisa hai how what it is okay Uh, if you are taking for a guy from a tata who's worked there for 20 years you for sure you know he's been honest integrity high you know, blah 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 all that stuff you just have to check whether he's got you know uh, you know you know he knows his functional stuff which is there so so and you know what sort of person he'll be so you know and people mix out these things so i don't know great great talking to you uh, same here and uh, it was really an interesting discussion thank you so this was chandrashekhar mukherjee you know sharing his thoughts his opinion his experiences around uh, happiness at the workplace i i really hope everyone enjoys this conversation thank you so much <laughs>